So it's been about a year since Apple unveiled and announced Apple Intelligence back at WWDC in 2024. And throughout the iterations of iOS 18 that we've gotten over this entire year, Siri maybe has gotten a little bit smarter here and there and gotten a new paint job with the rainbow look and the text of Siri. But for the most part, from a conversational standpoint and an intelligence standpoint, it's been relatively the same compared to iOS 17. And now with the emergence of these crazy smart AI assistants like ChatGPT and Perplexity specifically, I wanted to put all three of these to the test when it came to a voice assistant for iPhones. I'm gonna test it out with a bunch of different kind of prompts and use cases to see which one can go the farthest, who can integrate into applications, which one is the smartest overall, and which use cases would be better for each different AI assistant. And at the end, I'll crown one the winner and recommend which one I think you should use as your main voice assistant prior to iOS 19 coming out. But without further ado, let's see exactly which one is best for you. Let's get into it. So just a few quick things that I wanted to talk about before I get started. First and foremost, each one of these will be using the free version. Like I said, Perplexity and ChatGPT do have monthly subscriptions if you wanna pay for them, but I wanted to show off the free version so it doesn't cost anybody anything when it comes to comparing these. And then secondly, I wanted to give you guys my prediction or what I think before I actually do this experiment because I haven't actually done it. I do think Siri is gonna surprise us a little bit in terms of all the in-app integrations that it has because Siri, of course, is built by Apple, so it will be able to integrate into the most amount of applications and get some stuff done like directions, reminders, notifications, and things like that. Then Perplexity does have some integration into Apple applications, which I'm gonna be curious to see how that ends up playing out. And then ChatGPT has zero integrations into Apple applications, but in my opinion, I think it's gonna be the smartest and the more useful of the bunch. So now that I have that kind of prediction set into stone, let's see how it all actually plays out. So let's start off pretty easy here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just test out some basic knowledge, like some factual information that you can just quickly look up on Google or anything else. Okay, so let's start off with Siri, then we'll go to ChatGPT and then Perplexity, but we're gonna start off with some basic knowledge first. So let's open it up. Who is the president of France right now? How many feet in a mile? Can you convert 32 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius? And now let's go to ChatGPT. Who is the president of France right now? How many feet are in a mile? There are 5,280 feet in a mile. Can you convert 32 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius? Sure. To convert 32 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius, you use the formula F minus 32 times 59. So 32 minus 32 times 59 equals 0 times 59. Thus, 32 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 0 degrees Celsius. All right, now let's get into perplexity. Who is the president of France right now? The current president of France is Emmanuel Macron. He has been in office since May 14th, 2017. How many feet are in a mile? 5,280 feet in a mile. And then can you convert 32 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius? To convert 32 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius, you use the formula. Celsius equals Fahrenheit minus 32 times 5 ninths. So 32 degrees Fahrenheit is equivalent to 0 degrees Celsius. So overall, all three gave the same exact answers. They just gave it in different ways. Siri gave it to us in a text prompt. It didn't respond back to us. Then the other ones kind of walked you through the exact explanation as to how they got the calculations for Fahrenheit versus Celsius and things like that. But ultimately, they all gave us the correct answer. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is get a little more complicated, but should still be relatively easy for any of these AI assistants, which is gonna be some real world kind of navigation and some stuff to find out. So for example, I wanna be able to find some sort of restaurant that has a certain criteria for me. So let's see what that looks like for each of these. So now we're gonna ask some more specific and like location-based questions, but let's get into it right now with Siri. Can you find me a local pizzeria that's also pet friendly? Can you navigate me to Pizza Brothers?
So it is nice that it's able to kind of map that out and have that dual action. So go from asking the question, finding where we're going, and then ultimately going to the Google Maps or the Apple Maps to get this done. Now let's get ChatGPT to give it a go. Can you find me some local pizzerias that are also pet friendly? Can you navigate me to one of those? Sure. Let me get you directions to Wahiza. It's located at 46th Street and Broadway in Bayonne. So again, it looks like ChatGPT has no integrations outside of the application. So of course, yes, it was able to find it for me or at least trying to direct me there, but we couldn't open up any specific application. Now let's try Perplexity. Can you find me a local pizzeria that's also pet friendly? Can you navigate me to Pompeii Pizza? I've set up navigation to Pompeii Pizza in Bayonne, New Jersey. You should see the route on your screen now. Enjoy your pizza. So as you can see here with Perplexity, it is using Apple Maps to navigate this and kind of portray what it looks like. But in order to get turn by turn navigation, you do have to go the final mile and tap on here to open it in Apple Maps. So next up, I want to do some kind of real world research in terms of being able to find things chronologically, being able to find what I'm looking for based on just what I'm saying, and lastly, summarizing it for me to see which one gives me the best summary and the most accurate information of what I'm looking for, because I know what I'm looking for and I want to see if it can find it for me. So now we're going to get into fetching data from the internet and then also some summarization all through voice assistant. So let's start off with Siri here. Can you pull up the latest 9to5Mac.com article and summarize it for me? We'll use this. First time that prompt came up. So as you can see, it kind of summarized it for me, but then went away. There was no persistence. There's no way of looking at it. And there's no way to actually go into it after the fact. So now let's try a different one. So it's not exactly what I wanted, but I guess technically it did give me some information from some sort of article that we can neither confirm nor deny that it was the latest one. So now we're gonna try GPT, but before we continue, definitely consider subscribing to the channel if this information was useful at all. And can you summarize the latest 9to5Mac.com article for me? According to 9to5Mac, Apple has released a new iPhone 16 ad promoting case reuse. And the iPad Air is discounted by $200. Can you tell me a little bit more about the MacBook Air? Sure. The 15-inch M4 MacBook Air is one of Apple's latest releases. So as you can see here, not only was able to get the information that I wanted, but then also you were able to then ask it more after the fact. And then of course you have all your sources as well as a transcription of your entire conversation, which is pretty accurate, especially if you want to grab that data and move that data around and maybe copy and paste it or edit it or whatever the case may be. But now let's go to Perplexity and see what they do. Can you summarize the latest 9to5Mac article for me, please? I found an article on 9to5Mac about rumors that Apple was warning iPhone users to delete Google Chrome from their devices. Would you like me to summarize this article for you? Yes, please. So what I like about this is that this is the first one that was accurate, first off, and secondly, it was the only one that actually asked me for confirmation if this was the article that I wanted. And it gave me a pretty decent summarization that I could quickly talk about with somebody else if need be. Now let's do some problem solving. So some real world issues like being able to hang a painting or maybe fixing a flat tire, things that I wouldn't know how to do off the top of my head, but would need some assistance doing that. Let's see how they do. I have a flat tire, what should I do with that? Can I get a step-by-step -step direction on how to do that, please? No, I need a step-by-step -step directions on how to change my flat tire. How do I change my flat tire? I need bullet points, please. 
So as you can see there, that was a fail when it comes to Apple intelligence. It couldn't really give me any more information after the fact. So now let's try GPT. I have a flat tire, what should I do? First, find a safe spot to pull over and turn on your hazard lights. If you decide to change the tire yourself and need more detailed or tips, just let me know. So what I like about this is that it did give me all the information I needed. It said, if you have all these parts and all these equipment tools and things like that, then you can do it yourself. If not, this is what you would do next to get some information or some help. And of course you can continue to talk to GPT. And also there's a feature in ChatGPT where you can actually pull up a video feed, which I used in the past to help turn on a water heater that I didn't know how to function, but you can literally point it at it and then be able to ask it questions based on what it's seeing. So again, ChatGPT definitely gets a big win, but let's see how perplexity does. I have a flat tire, how do I change it? To change a flat tire, first make sure you're on a flat, stable surface and turn on your hazard lights. Then what? Now what do I do? Interesting, so it looks like Perplexity also kind of got stuck on that one. That could be a case by case basis, but again, ChatGPT seemed to have been the most reliable one out of the three there. And now let's do some complex reasoning, right? So I'm gonna kind of ask it some weird questions that again, there is an answer to a specific answer, but it's something that most people wouldn't really ask. So let's see how it does. If I leave Manhattan at 5 p.m. and drive for six hours, which cities could I reach? Okay, so it looks like it did gave me a decent answer, but it did list it out for me. So again, the answers are there. Now, can you navigate me to Buffalo, New York? So like I said, I'm confused by the fact that I was speaking out loud. I wish Apple would add maybe a little mute button the same way ChatGPT and Perplexity do, but now let's see what the other ones do for us. I'm leaving Manhattan at 5 p.m. and I drive for six hours. What cities could I reach? Can you navigate me to DC? To drive from Manhattan to Washington, DC, head south on I-95. The trip is about two So again, as you can see there, it's not gonna physically navigate me, at least not through an application, but it'll give me kind of like the quote unquote map quest, if you guys remember what that is back in the day. But now let's see what Perplexity does with that same information. I plan on leaving Manhattan at 5 p.m and I wanna drive for six hours. Which cities could I reach in six hours? In six hours of driving from Manhattan, you could reach cities like Washington, DC, Boston, or even as far as Toronto. Yeah, navigate me to Toronto, please. I've set up the navigation to Toronto for you. You should see the route on your map now. Have a safe drive. So I kind of like Perplexity's approach there because it was able to not only navigate me there, find me the route, but then I could have just tapped on open maps and then it would have taken me to the turn by turn directions to get me from New Jersey over to Toronto. So Perplexity, in my opinion, wins that one. So again, when it comes to app integrations, it looks like Siri, if you have one specific request, will get it done a little bit better, but everything else, either ChatGPT or Perplexity does, with Perplexity winning because it has some actual integrations versus ChatGPT, having zero. And now lastly, this is gonna be all about integrations and utility, which is something that ChatGPT can't really do at all yet. So we're pretty much gonna just forget about ChatGPT for this one, which is unfortunate because as of right now, ChatGPT is my main voice assistant when it comes to whenever I need something. But let's talk about maybe some utility stuff like setting reminders, sending emails on behalf of me and see how far I can go with each one of these. Can you send a text message to test saying that I'll be there soon? Mobile. Send. So as you can see, it does have full integration there. So I was able to use purely my voice to send out that text message. And then if I do use the other ones, let's see what happens. So let's do JanGBT first. Can you send a text message to test saying that I'll be there soon? I can't send text messages directly.
Got it. What subject and message would you like to include in the email? Test and I'll be there soon. I've prepared the email for you. You can review and send it. So as you can see here, it got everything set up for me up until the actual send pass button. So if I press this send, it will send this email and it'll be on its way to this person or whatever the case may be. So it was able to at least get me 99% of the way there and even come through some of my contacts to confirm what I was looking for. And then I did wanna do some final ones when it came to actual integrations. So for instance, when it comes to Siri, can you play a Justin Bieber song from Spotify? And you can see that this is coming from Spotify, which is great to see. Can you play the nine to five Mac overtime podcast episode, please? And as you can see, that does work as well. So it is able to go into third party applications and not just rely on Apple Music to get some stuff done. So that is definitely a win for Siri because none of the other ones can really do that. But for example, Perplexity can go into first party applications to kind of do the same thing. It just can't reach into third party ones and it is relatively limited in terms of what it can do from an integration standpoint. But again, it's more so than ChatGPT because ChatGPT has zero of them. So for example, can you play the nine to five Mac Podcast episode, please. I've opened the latest episode of the 9 to 5 Mac podcast for you. Would you like to continue with anything else? Or should we end our conversation here? Could you actually play a Justin Bieber song instead? I'm playing Baby by Justin Bieber. Enjoy the music. Is there anything else I can assist you with? No, that's it. So as you can see there, it was able to open up a Justin Bieber song, but it used Apple Music. And it can also do things like set reminders, you know, send emails on your behalf. But again, it'll take you that final mile when it requires an action at the end. So if it is sending an email, sending anything out, and it requires, again, something that goes outside of your phone, then it will ask you for that final confirmation. But if it's something as simple as playing a podcast, playing a song, it will just get that going for you and then end it off. So Perplexity is doing something right, which is awesome to see. I would just love to see a mixture of all three of these put together. But that will just about do for this video, everybody. As you saw, each of these AI assistants have a little bit going for them overall, right? Of course, Siri is gonna have the most integration overall, like I mentioned earlier. Even though I think Siri is the dumbest out of all of them by far, even though it uses ChatGPT as a background source, which is kind of interesting. But again, that's for another video. But it is nice to know that Siri can integrate into some of these applications very well, like being able to navigate, set reminders, set emails. It's the only one that can send an iMessage. It's the only one that can open up a third party application like a Spotify. Then you have Perplexity, which is kind of in that middle ground where it can actually integrate into some applications, at least some first party applications built into iOS. It can't take that final action for you, but it can actually still get it almost fully sent up. And then all you have to do is press or tap on the final action to get it done. And then lastly, in my opinion, at least because maybe it's the one that I use the most, ChatGPT knows me the best, it knows how I want my things answered, it knows the type of language that I want. And I'm sure if I gave Perplexity some tries over time, it would learn me just like ChatGPT knows me. But for right now, I'm gonna hold on to ChatGPT until the integrations get either a lot better on Perplexity or maybe Siri gets smarter. Like if you combine Siri with ChatGPT, which is what's supposed to be happening, at least on paper is what's supposed to be happening, then that's gonna be the perfect world, at least for my scenarios. If ChatGPT could integrate to these applications, do some cross-referencing, be able to open up multiple things at once, go to maybe one application, get information, send it through another application, then that's gonna be amazing. But for right now, it's still relatively broken and I'm just hoping iOS 19 can really get us to the point where we wanna be when it comes to these voice assistants. But let me know with a comment down below what you think. If you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you wanna watch more videos like this one, definitely check out one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everybody.